how do you say the dark side in Hebrew <laughs> is what I would ask the, the audience, right? The dark, the way you say the dark side is actually not Doth, but it's connected to Star Wars very interestingly because you remember they used to have the Sith Lords. You know, you remember that? Right. The Lords of the Sith. And Sith is Set. And Set is Sutin. And Sutin is Soot. And Soot is when you have a chimney, they have to get people to clean your chimney. They have to clean the soot from the chimney. Now, where does soot come from? It comes from the burning, from Kim, that which burns. And then we have a we had a uh, deity and the dynasties under the Sutin influences, mm -hmm. correct? X. So now we have what's called in the Kabbalah, in when I say Kabbalah, I'm going to make a distinction. In the K Kabbalah, right, meaning the more orthodox mystic approach, there's a concept called the Sithra Akra. And the Sithra Akra means the dark side. And the Sithra Akra the root of the word Sith is, is of course, again, Sut, Sutin, but Sud also. You hear the word secrecy. So that means that the contemplating the, the African in, in, uh, in, in, in African's existence on the planet Earth, one must contemplate the application of blackness and what blackness means and in various cultural paradigms and understandings is extremely misunderstood so you have blackness maligned in many respects in many cultural paradigms and it's misunderstood and people don't understand that it's an actual um it's a it's a uh it's a reaction to acts of sorcery when you see the color black, you see the working of a work that's done in the unseen. Mm. So when you see Darth Vader, this is a very significant archetype. I would tell people, I would suggest that you read um, uh, 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 Joseph Campbell and indulge into his narrative because he speaks about how the, uh, the hero and the hero's journey and some of the things that the hero will have to um, face. And I will never forget as a child, my father took me to see The Empire Strikes Back. And in the film, Darth Vader tells Luke Skywalker after, I think after or before he cut his hand off, he said, I am your father. You heard? So this shows you the myth, how it plays out on the mind. So now if you notice in the film, Darth Vader operates from the unseen. They have a scene in the film where uh, one of the um, the generals the, where the gray suits and, and, and shit was sitting around him and was trying to mock him and was like, yo, you got so much of this um, allegiance to your dark and, and primitive religious mm. beliefs. Mm. You heard? Thanks. And Darth Vader just started choking him from the unseen mentally. You heard? Mm. He was one of the people that knew how to tap into a third force. You heard? Mentally. You heard? Yeah. So now, when you hear people say that Kabbalah is, um, excuse me, that Doth is associated to the dark side, they're speaking from another branch of Kabbalistic parlance that we would spell with a Q that's more in, entrenched in hermetic philosophies which regard and 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 uh which are regarded by and sought after highly by western occultism you heard so there's a clear distinction there's a world of some of the greatest the greatest one of the greatest books i ever read on the subject of kabbalah only mentions people from the western approaches only once in one page and then speaks about them not even in high regard. They're speaking about, they was like Aleister Crowley and them is like the fakest shit ever to Judaism. So I'm like, when you get into Western occultism, 
a lot of it is um cookie cut a lot of it is fly by night and they make it up and because of popular culture and because of things like wikipedia and stuff like that where anybody could write anything down if they if it sounds cute and nobody's there to cross reference it you go look up what is doth and they say it's where all the sephiroth connect and i was like wow this is wild that this is not what it is it has nothing absolutely to do with that and many um many trees of life and its depiction over a course of several centuries you can see the the tree of life depicted without doth there you can find doth not mentioned in much in many people's literature you heard so the best book on if, if somebody was to ask me what is hey 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 what is the best book on Kabbalah, I'm gonna tell you the best book on Kabbalah is the Torah, you heard, or the Tanakh, the 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 Hebrew Scriptures is the best book on the text. So when we speak of words or we speak of the received doctrine of mysticism, we speak into a people who have been oppressed by any overt use and application of religious ideology, all the while there's a priesthood behind the scenes who don't believe in none of the stuff that you be sitting up believing in. You heard? So the ideology and the, the concept was for them to create uh, aut uh, an automaton, somebody who's just going to operate religious context. And, you know, people pick and choose parts of the Bible that they love and that they like and then parts that they don't like, you know. So it's it's all contingent on your understanding. So when we get to words like Doth, I found in the in our community, an African-American community of those who desire to improve the quality of their understanding and their knowledge of um, occult principles, what they'll actually do is they'll they'll do like this um, shooting from the hip um, uh, um, kind of contextualization where everything gets filtered through no matter what it is with the, even a lack of understanding. If you don't understand something, this says your melanin. Your, mm. Mm. And then you could be walking around having and facilitating people walking in error and speaking about concepts that they don't know nothing about. So when I hear people speak about Metatron's cube, Metatron's this and Metatron's that, and I'm like, y'all don't even know what y'all talking about. And y'all associating it to concepts that you, that if you knew what this came from, you would be operating with it in a different modality that might be able to benefit you. But we sound like parrots. We like to parrot what the pilgrims say and sound intelligent and not and negate what the origin of what something truly comes from. So when I tell people this and I say Doth comes from Africa and the word Doth is still being used in Africa, in Brazil, in um, any place that they practice Yoruba, Ifa, Santeria, the word Doth is present. So when I say that to people, then you have to create this dialogue and an overview of qualifying why did you just say that, AA? And this is the thing with our people. I've been saying this, King. The scholarship was not available at the time amongst our people to qualify what I was saying to make it significant for them. So linguistically, we run the world. We are however the most forgetful people in the world we rule the entire world king with our nuances and our sounds and our first identification in terms that we attribute to concepts that we use readily so now when you push to me in front of me a book with flying talking snakes you heard levitating prophets um, talking donkeys, flying monkeys, all type of shit inside of the Bible, right? They just be going in, and then people be like this, um, so and so, and people really be trying to do this, son. They be like this, so and so lived for nine hundred something years, and then he had a kid, and all of this, right? And then people even have the audacity 
to associate the Anunnaki to being giant or giant skeletal structures and shit and turn it into aliens and all of that. And I'll be like, this comes from a lack of knowledge and aping the ofe, meaning you are you are mimicking the parody of your oppressor's lies and his inability to understand your African contribution to reality and history.